Thanks for the show. Thank you. This is one of the craziest nights in America when all the results are flying in. Everybody's trying to predict everything. Um, do you think, judging by what we've seen so far, that this was a good night for America, or is it too call? It's too soon to call. Well, it was definitely America. That's for sure. We saw, <laughs> we saw in Florida. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like Andrew Gillum has conceded that governor's race to Ron DeSantis, and. Uh, that is, uh, you know, something I think, you know, frankly, we've seen a discomfort with black leadership. Even right. though we, you know, we've had an eight years of a black president, but there that, are a lot of folks that are still not ready for black folks to run things. But is it fair to say that, though? Because, I mean, like, you, you it's what? That was 49 to 50. I think that's, what, 50,000 votes that separated them? Well, and, and it's funny because... Of, what, they, eight, eight million? And Amendment 4 passed in Florida tonight, which gives the right, uh, <laughs> the voting rights back to... 1.6 million people who have, you know, been formerly incarcerated. Right. So, you know, so, yeah, suffice to say, that could have made the difference. It, it, it really is an interesting, uh, you know, race to watch. It, it, all the midterms are, because a lot of people said that this was an interesting midterm because it wasn't about the candidates. Right. People said this is about Trump or not Trump. Do you think that's what it was, and do you think that was decided tonight? I think that certainly the House victory for the Democrats repudiates Trump in a big way. That you know about uh, nine percent of the you know the margin for the popular vote, which means that you know that, that's almost you know that's a lot of people in this country who've said no to Trump, independence, abandon Trump. Right. So it is a repudiation of Trump in that respect. But but then you see the governor's races in you know, Georgia. Right now, it's still pending. Kemp is leading. And in Florida and in some other states, you see Hawley winning over McCaskill in Missouri. Right. So I think that you, you, what you've seen is that you've seen a repudiation of Trump, but you've seen that Trumpism works. Oh, Trumpism works, but not Trump. Now, let, let's go back to the Stacey Abrams race. Yeah. You said it's too close to call right now, and it looks like Kemp is winning. It's a very strange race for me because, I mean, the person who's meant to be monitoring the race is running in the race. Right. Um, and you also have a situation where it feels like people don't have tr a trust in the voting system right now in Georgia. You know, the stories that we were coming up online, people are saying, like, how is this happening? And then, most importantly, for many, the polls. Mm -hmm. The polls had Stacey Abrams winning, and it doesn't seem like that's happening. When when does the news stop reporting the polls to people? When when does that just go out of the window? Honestly, I mean, a lot of us in the news don't pay attention to the polls because I mean, look at how, what happened in 2016. You had people overestimating, you know, the the support for Hillary Clinton. Right. Uh, granted, she won by more than three million votes nationwide, but national polls didn't really matter. It mattered about what happened in those states, and you see the same kind of thing playing out tonight. And I think what we need to understand is that there are other dynamics at play here. There's something called the Bradley effect, uh, where a lot of people say they're going to vote say for a black right. candidate and then they get inside that polling place they get into that ballot that ballot and they're like uh, I don't know if I can pull the lever for the black guy right and so fortunately I think that you know we've seen a lot of that in this election and I I don't know if that's the only reason why Abrams is down and Gillum lost but I think that it certainly contributes to it I think a lot of folks don't you know understand how race and racism play in this country I know it's too soon to say for certain but the Democrats have the house does this mean that America is starting to veer on, on a, toward a different course? Does this mean that Democrats can begin a fight back? Does this let Republicans reassess what their message is with Trump? I think it means that this is the beginning of the fight, frankly. I mean, you have uh, its Democratic House can now subpoena pretty much anyone they want. They can start the investigations. They could basically do what Congress is supposed to do, which is to put a check on the president. And while he's still going to have the Senate to appoint his judges and whatnot, his legislative agenda is essentially dead. And so, well, don't, don't cheer yet. Don't cheer yet, because that gives him a lot of time to do other things, <laughs> okay? Like start more wars. Wow. So I think that's like, an emotional roller coaster yeah, right there. Yeah, it's, and the thing is that there are no clear answers from this election. I think we're really going to have to see not only how the president reacts, but also how strongly Democrats go forward now that they have people, even the people that lost, you know, Beto, uh, Gillum, and possibly Abrams, real stars in their party that have shown a pathway forward for them to not just, you know, run against Trump, but to confront racism. And we're going to see if the Democrats follow their lead, right. even though they lost. It's going to be exciting to watch. Thank you so much for being on the Thank show. You. Great seeing you again.